Wow. So, <laughs> I mean, hey. Dave is wondering what just happened. <laughs> Hi, uh, this is Dave with Awaken with DK, and thanks for joining us today. I have Becky with us again. And we're really excited to continue our conversation from uh, what we started last week regarding uh, commitment. And the fun thing was, was Becky was able to uncover um, certain themes and whatnot around the topic of commitment. And that's really exciting for me because I apparently, like a lot of people, must have issues with commitment. So... <laughs> And, and it shows up in lots of areas in, in my life, and, and some of it might be um, preparation and whatnot, and, and right before we got on the camera, Becky asked me, how are you doing? And, and I said, oh, I'm good. I said, I, you know, I have a little bit of anxiety, and, and I'm not sure why, and, and I said, maybe it's because I'm not prepared as much as I'd like to be, and then I said, well, but maybe I'm just, I'm not always prepared, so I'm kind of used to it. So that's kind of where we're at with some things, and, and we were going to maybe reset a little bit um, about last week, and also as we speak, our very, very special guest, uh, Diana Lucas, who's a wellness specialist here in St. Louis, is going to be on our show, and, and she's the editor of um, Yoga and Spa Magazine, and so we'll, we'll probably visit Becky and I just for a little bit to kind of reset, and then after our first break... Uh, we'll bring in Diana, and um, one of the things I was excited that she's here, she has a certain lifestyle that she leads, and um, I'm going to definitely talk to her about that and how that works. So okay. that's it. Hey, actually, I think she's just going to come on in now. Hi there. Hi. You want to come in now, or you want to come in after our segment? Because we're live. <laughs> come on, come on in. in. This is what live radio TV oh, is all about. Hey there. Hi there. How you doing? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'll give you a hug. Uh, I'll give you a hug at break time. Okay. Yeah, yeah please, please. please. We're going to have this to squeeze great. all together here. Okay. Make yeah, sure that we all fit me. into the, Holy cow. the camera well. Um, but before we go into Diana, because we want to hear all about you, um, we were just setting up, because I want to backtrack a little bit and kind of bring you up to speed. Last week when um, we talked to David... We were talking about commitment came up and how his lack of commitment has maybe hindered him in getting to where it is that he really wants to be, but also realizes that that lack of commitment by him not committing, it has lowered his self-confidence as well. So, I, I mean, you had some feedback right after the show. What were you, some of your ahas after that? Yeah, that's a great, that's good feedback, uh, or a good place to go. And um, one thing that can't, an aha moment that I had was about how commitment can change the speed of everything and that if you can get back to committing to something, you spend less time kind of flailing about. And, and I think, you know, in my journey right now, you know, I, I want to be moving towards wellness, but then I flail about some time. And so you brought up the topic of, well, you can recommit and you can recommit whenever you want. So that whole concept of recommitting to something that you may have started and then something triggers it. That was a huge aha moment for me, and I thought that was really awesome. Um, and then the other thing that came to me was I when I watched the show, um, the archives of the show, is how much I talk. <laughs> and I basically... Well, you hang out uh, with David all the time, too. I have to look at the camera and laugh, David. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes, honestly, live TV... When I look at the phone and it's David, I have to gauge what am I doing? <laughs> yes. Can I take this call or do I have to call him back? So it's true. God love you. Yeah, God love you. Good share there. I love you. that you have that much to communicate. Uh, you know, it's, I uh, yeah, or something, or lack of brevity, one or the other. Well, it was, but, go mm, ahead. But I, I watched, you know, part of what I said to Becky earlier was um, I watched some of the show. I didn't even watch my whole show. So any of y'all <laughs> that watched the whole show, thank you for that. <laughs> Um, but it was a real eye opener for me to see myself on video and, and, um, so what were some of the things that you observed? Because having a show that's recorded like this, um, we don't all have that opportunity in life to actually witness ourselves in motion. So during this show, you're actually witnessing who you are and how you're showing up in that one hour. So what's some of your own feedback and what, what you observed? 
Um, well, specific, regarding the show was um, one thing I lo- saw also uh, via video is how I kind of ping pong around. And um, I sometimes will get an idea and I'll be so excited about it as I'm talking about it that I'll forget even what my point is. And so sometimes the extra talking is to kind of circle back to try to find what the original point was. And so that's something I want to try to avoid on this show. And, and I think going back to the concept of commitment, that the more I prepare um, for the show and get organized and get better at this, I think that's just a sign of commitment. Mm-hmm. You know, So mm-hmm. committing to the show itself is a topic. You know, I'm working on spending a lot of my time on Awaken S Tale right now. Mm-hmm. And this show is dovetailing into it perfectly, obviously. But I'm putting so much commitment in that that I'm putting this more on the shelf. And that's something that I... We're, we all live almost that. that simultaneous life where we have so many things in, um, in our funnel and on our to-do list that how do you designate time to do certain things because that shows the level of commitment goes up a whole new notch when you're a multi canoer and you're doing multiple different things. It's how can you structure your time and your energy? And I'm very organic myself. I don't like to plan a whole lot. I don't like to prep a whole lot for shows, but I am constantly thinking in my mind of directions that it can go. And I'm always aware of my energy what's energizing me at that time means that I'm on track with something. So although you may have several things on your funnel, in your funnel and on your to-do list on a daily basis, know that that can be changed. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, to that's give yourself huge. permission that change is also necessary to re-energize yourself to get back on, and you can constantly go back and forth. So, um, But then there's also things that we know we need to be doing that don't energize us like working out working out i'm not of it you know that's not one of those things that i wish it did when i was doing more yoga i it was energizing to me i knew that you know i got excited but then when it's other types of working out it's like oh gosh to get myself into the gym so it's also finding where you're energized in your workouts and that was a a key so it's okay to change and it's okay um, to have multiple things to do it's structuring that and making commitments on not only a daily basis but also on a weekly and a monthly basis to make sure your tests well, that's definitely so, something that I want to talk to Diane about yeah, because I, yeah, yeah. We have, I think we can have a whole big massive conversation today about that because how that affects you physically because I made just a quick transition to that is I made the comment earlier that I'm working on cutting over this new Awaken S Tale website and the website's about wellness but it's going to make me sick <laughs> so it's like <laughs> I am wow. working so hard I mean I'm like staying up till 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning and I'm not I'm the basic tenants and I read I was reading on your website about um, how basic tenants you know and one big bullet point you said there was sleep rest Mm -hmm. and i'm like i'm not i am just but that's cool i like that i'm here where i'm at right now if we have a practice and if yoga becomes a lifestyle if we're just going to go there Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely yoga isn't just exercise it really is a way of life it is but it's not for everyone Mm -hmm. we call all kinds of things a lifestyle you might have a fitness lifestyle you might love the gym you might hate the gym But I think in our culture, we put so much emphasis on exercise in a certain place, and we forget that our lives can create opportunities to exercise. So the biggest complaint, I'll say, that I hear from clients is, I don't have time, Mm -hmm. literally, to fit exercise into my life. And I think that's kind of funny. I think that, you know, we, we make time for the things that are important to us. We make time to eat. Yeah. You know, oh, yeah. We sometimes make time to sleep when we have to. We make time to be with our families, on and on. So why is it that we leave ourselves for last? You know, that's a self love is. issue. Yeah. It's a self respect issue. But then let's just circle back and say we are multipreneurs. I love that word. Mm-hmm. I'm remembering that one. <laughs> and because we've taken on so many things, how can we fit in our quote me time? Yeah. So 
all day long. Right now, we're sitting here in these chairs. We could be exercising right now and not up at the gym or in a yoga class, but in our bodies, the way that we hold ourselves. Here's yoga. So I'm kind of kicked back right yeah, now. I'm pretty like, relaxed. And I'm like, oh, look at this. We can all <laughs> we're sit gonna go a little into bit good tighter. Yes. Wait, we're going to go into good in posture. Here that holds the chair back up. And we're going to use some muscle, right? Yeah, so we're going to pull our bellies in a little bit. You know, we're going to pull our shoulders back. And we're going to lift up a little higher. We all feel better about ourselves. We all probably look a lot better on camera say, now, too. My boobs just got bigger, too. <laughs> <laughs> so we all just make a big shift and a big choice, shift. right? Yes. A little bit of commitment to ourselves just in the way we present ourselves and the way that we walk. We're embarrassed to be proud, I think. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, if you're wow. walking down the street with your shoulders back, especially us girls, girls mm-hmm. up, you know, then what are we hiding behind there? And our culture puts so much emphasis on what we look like physically so that the energetics of what we just chose got lost. So the way that we are in the world every minute can be an exercise, you know, and it doesn't have to be on the mat. It can be in your kitchen while you're washing the dishes. The way that you're thinking about each little act that you do Mm -hmm. and being deliberate you know and using your muscles you know just instead of picking the lazy way which we all do you know so here's the lazy way let's go back to the lazy way everybody get comfortable (laughs) (laughs) look at that look we're all cool and hip now (laughs) maybe we need to twist that the cool and hip is how to the right posture yeah you know so it would be really interesting you know if we could you know make a huge shift in the way kids sit at school you know how it was back in our day? Oh, yeah. I'm guessing that we're all from that little zone of time where there were a lot of kids in Catholic school. Oh, you know? I, I was right there. And if you did sit up too. straight, you know, Sister Ruler was going to get you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? So, ooh, snap right. two, you're going to sit up. Now, yeah. you know, I look around in the classrooms of the high school where my daughter goes to school. Here's oh, the posture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, and they're listening. And they're here, you know, and I'm like, Wow. What's going on with these humans, you know, that somebody taught them that this is an okay way to be, Mm -hmm. you know? So if they're up here, look how much more focused there is, you know, look how much more present and committed you are to whatever it is that you're doing just by choosing, you know, in the moment. So, well, it's sort of an awareness though. I mean, I think, I mean, like, you know, one time Sherry, our friend said to me, we shift and we drift. You know, it's, I mean, I love that she said that, you know, so it's like we drift, we drift, we're out, you know, but then something triggers it and we're like, oh yeah, and then we, sh- and then we shift back to where, but it's even just being aware of it. And that's what freaks me out a little bit is I don't, my guess, and I just, it's just my interpretation is I just don't think people even know better. They just maybe don't know better to, you know what I mean? Well, think about or, what or not, we've been taught. Not. So I'm thinking about. <laughs> I think in terms of decades, you know, I think, you know, every 10 years, let's look at the trend. So take, I I came from a fashion background, so forgive that. But if you just look at that, you know, look at the way fashion was 50 years ago, right? What was the year 50 years ago? 60. 1960. Yeah, 61. Right? We're coming 19. out of a time. Let's let's go back even further than that. Yeah. Let's just say. Let's go back to the Roaring Twenties. Let's go back even one decade okay. before that. 1910. We're still in a. Oh, the corset. Bustle, yeah. Right. You know, so kind of coming back. Look how much attention we have to give to our posture because of what we're wearing. Yeah. You know, and look at the attention to detail from that period in culture. In what history. are those? Those are spanks, right? The, the, the spanks count as a corset? No. You know what I'm no, talking about, no, right? They have spanks for men. It's a super... Dillard, or, or, Dillard's. I swear to God, I was at Dillard's. And they had this gigantic display of spanks for men. Did you buy men. a pair? No, That's all I, I couldn't go there. I thought about it. Who's the dude that's going to wear that? I so thought. I was like, that was such a, a money Genius suck for idea. them. Wow. I mean, they're going to lose. Crazy. So In St. Louis, at least, they're yeah, going to lose sure. their butt on that promo. Because guys aren't going to wear spanks. But yeah, so same, thinking the, about that, ahead, attention sorry. to detail, attention to rigor, you and know, you, you know, that. and there's so much romance of that time, you know, mm-hmm. that people were just really in a heightened sense of awareness. There weren't a lot of distractions. We sure didn't have radio, TV, or anything iPods like the internet. We had the iPod horse to ride. And, and the letter <laughs> yeah. to write. Yeah. Yeah. You paid attention to every curl that you put on the page and the nuances of energy that would go along 